Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar here. And I'm Courtney, and today we're gonna be building a niche fragrance collection for every season of the year. So how this is gonna work, Courtney and I are actually teaming up here. So you're bringing three to the table, mm -hmm. I'm bringing three to the table. And how this is gonna work is we have all the uh, seasons of the year that we're going to be representing with our picks. Yep. We'll go back and forth, but also what we did, just to add some more flair to this, two wild card picks. So we'll so have, we each one, have each. one Yep. Exactly. And really the whole purpose of that is just to give us kind of a nice, almost a Swiss Army knife of something yeah. else that we wanna to add to our collection, whether it's going to be for versatility or just some fun flair to add to our collection here. Yep, a little bonus fragrance. Okay, so we'll go in order. Yep. I was slated to start with spring, so I will begin here. Now go to for it. start us off, now this is a fragrance I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but I'm a big fan of it. Red Vetiver by Montal. So if you are familiar with Terre d'Hermes, uh, this is going to be very much on the nose there in a lot of ways, but it is different in some other ways. So Terre d'Hermes in terms of its overall scent profile is all on the vetiver back, also with an orange note off the top. This has the vetiver backbone, but it does not have the same citrus uh, just emphatically coming out at the top. Here we're kind of replacing that with more of a subdued grapefruit uh, on the initial kind of spray, but now it's really leaning into that longer uh, longevity here. I, I think this has way better performance than that the ADT. That is a powerful fragrance. It, it, but yeah, it's pretty It's pretty strong. I have, I've gotten some nice uh, compliments from this one, mm -hmm. mostly from guys, so I don't know what that it's really not says. A, not a girl. I mean, for the right type of person. It, it, it leans mature. Uh, it's not quite as mature as uh, Terre d'Hermes. I think it could be actually a little bit more casual yeah. uh, as well in terms of how it can be uh, really uh, utilized. Uh, you have vetiver, grapefruit, uh, pepper as well, and cedar. Patchouli is also a note in this fragrance. In terms of the bottle presentation, Montal, not my favorite, kind of looks like a hairspray bottle, but. It does, yeah. I think it's great. I, I think, think it's, it's kind of cool. It stands out in a cool way. Also, so basically how, if you had to just break this one down, if you like Terre d'Hermes or you're interested in giving that a shot, but you kind of like more of a woody, base to the fragrance with not as much citrus on the top, but also having some better longevity without really having to pay that much more, if not you know, less in yeah. some instances. Yeah. This is a great one to go for. Yeah, I'd if you like vetiver, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. If you don't, maybe not. Maybe not. But anyway, that's my pick for spring. So now, perfect. let's jump into summer. One of my new favorite fragrances is this Floris Bergamotto di Positano. One of my favorites. I love Incredible. that fragrance. Incredible. And I'm not sure if I like it so much because I heard that Meghan Markle wore it on her wedding day. Ever since then, I just get this really like royal feeling to this one. I love this one. It starts off with bergamot, ginger, orange, but then it has this really nice vanilla note, which I think is why I like it so much. Yeah, I, I, it's a creamy citrus. And which, the vanilla adds that creaminess to it that you don't get with other citruses. A lot of summer fragrances are very harsh and pungent off the top. And I don't typically like those. This is so rounded out in terms of its like presentation and how it just performs. It's not mm -hmm. the greatest in terms of performance, but it's elegant and yeah. I, I love that about it. It's not overpowering, it's very classy. Floris, in many ways, is a more mature fragrance house. It's clash, classic, you know, just British perfumes. Mm -hmm. This one has that, but also it doesn't have the same maturity. If I had to recommend a Floris fragrance for somebody that's like just trying to get a start into the brand, I would probably recommend this on a short list of some other ones, but yeah. this would definitely be there because I feel like somebody that's maybe not so far into niche fragrances would be able to like smell that and be like, huh, I could wear this. It's yeah. a very wearable fragrance compared to some of the other ones that can wear the individual. It can be the other way around in For some sure. instances. Yeah. It's very pretty, it's refreshing. That vanilla, again, adds that nice sweetness to it. I just absolutely love this one, adore it. Yeah, and Flores, special place in my heart too, just because I remember going to uh, German Street in London, and this was honestly the house that introduced me to fine fragrances. Yeah. I, I remember going in there with my dad, we were smelling different fragrances. I picked out Honey Oud as my fragrance, as like kind of my a souvenir on the trip. Mm -hmm. So I, I just have a lot of just fond memories of, of that brand, and I think that's a great one to take a look at for summer. No sure. question about it. Yep. Mediterranean coast, that nice summer breeze. Yep, Amalfi Coast, exactly Positano, is. which is a beautiful place. Oh, Love that amazing. place. And they did a nice job kind of making that come alive with that one. All right, so what are we moving on to? Fall. Fall, here we go. Now, Good one. story behind this one. I like sampling out different niche fragrances. It's, just, it's, it's a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Got a sample of this as well as many other fragrances from this house called Acro. This was my favorite of all their fragrances. And they're pretty just kind of lean in terms of the offering that they have, but all of their fragrances, I find they're very natural in how they smell. They're really much uh, focused in what they're going for. This one is called Awake. I wore this 
at Thanksgiving at your family's house. Yes, he came downstairs and everyone <laughs> stopped. I'm not I'm not even being dramatic. They all stopped. What are you wearing? We've gotten my parents a little bit into fragrances yeah, too, so sure. they're very into it, but it smells amazing. This, I mean, if you have to really boil it down to what I smell here, it's it's coffee. Mm -hmm. It's just straight coffee off the top. It also is pretty But not that, not that bitterness to it though. Yeah, I mean, we're, how I would describe this one is there's a lot of fragrances that go for that coffee note and they try to make it like it's a fresh brewed cup of coffee. This does not, not as much that. It's no, more it's like, almost like a, a drink that has like milk and cream in it maybe? I get like a roasted, Sweetness? you know what I mean? Like kind of, okay. I get like a feel of like it's just a fresh roasted coffee. You get a lemon note in there that's kind of taken a back seat okay. and then it you know has a vetiver base, which I'm finding is a kind of a common theme with a lot of things I like. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic coffee note. It's one of my favorite coffee fragrances I've ever tried. Mm -hmm. I also like how you like it. It's a compliment getter. Yes. I, I noticed that this is very easy for people to uh, have a lot of fun with and enjoy. I don't think this ever is going to annoy people around you when you wear it. People, regardless of where you're at, coffee I think is a very universal Very natural smell. smell too, yeah. Very natural smelling coffee note, but a huge fan of this one. Synthetic or anything like that. And also a lot of coffee notes, like they can be nauseating at times. Like this does not have the same effect. I could wear this in the morning uh, and it kind of matches the name, Awake. Like I get that perks feeling. Perks you like, up a little bit. It kind of does perk you up with that citrus and then also the coffee note, which I think really is the thing that stands out in this one. Yeah. Uh, longevity I would honestly too. wear that one as well. Unisex completely yeah. all the way, but still I think it leans maybe a bit more masculine, but coffee, again, universal type of just scent profile that I think just makes this one work. Good choice. Yeah. That's a great one. Okay, so that's my fall pick. Courtney, show us your winter pick. Winter, I chose none other than Layton. I think this is probably one of the safest niche purchases you can make if you're someone just getting into niche fragrances, especially. Um, it's incredibly versatile. I think this is a great one for all year round. Not Fall, winter, winter, probably the most, but probably spring most. too. But I wore this in the spring and summer even too. Mm -hmm. it's, a little bit lighter on the sprays in the summer, but still, I think it works. Yep, yeah, it's unisex. Um, I think it leans a little more masculine, but I personally really love to wear this one. It mm -hmm. kind of has that amber, florally type of fragrance to it um, with lavender, cinnamon, uh, pepper, patchouli. Yeah, I get I get a strong apple note on that one too off the top. Off the top, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of apple cinnamon off the top. Mm -hmm. Then it dries down into more of that spicier type of uh, warmer. Warm, yeah. Yes, and that's where I think this makes sense in kind of the colder months. Like that sure. feel to it yep. is really what makes this one work. Versatility as can be. Parfums de Marly also like great. I, yeah, they're just solid. Yeah. I mean, if you're trying to get into your first fragrance house, a lot of these are I would say like true niche houses. Like yeah. these are maybe not the easiest choices or like the no-brainer choices. This one is probably on our list, the only no-brainer in regards to like, I, I would say most people are gonna find this pleasant. It's mass awesome. appealing for sure. And everybody knows this one. I've never met anyone that doesn't like it. Yeah, so there you go. That, that's what you're getting here. I think that's good for this type of list. We needed yep. something that could be that backbone. Round of everything like, out. Exactly. Is this your wild card? This is my wild card. So we're through the seasons and now we're getting into some other stuff. Here, from Imaginary Authors, I know you're not as much of a fan of this one, but. I'm not. So I grew up on the water. You probably honestly could see it behind us if you look far enough, but I always just recall times of just seeing like a storm front come in and like, you know, you see like the waves coming in. Maybe I'm getting really just uh, into the description of this one, but this one's called Every Storm Serenade, and I think that name perfectly suits what this fragrance is all about. For sure. It has that seaside marine type of vibe and what it's going for. You have some watery sea notes with uh, the overall complexion of this one. Also, uh, vetiver, eucalyptus, uh, spruce is also gonna be in here, but uh, ambergris is kind of gonna also kind of add some saltiness and kind of muskiness to the overall fragrance. Uh, it kind of reminds me just of a rainy day in a way. Yeah. And I, I, that's how I almost look at it. Like those days where you almost don't want to go outside, you know, depending on where you're at in the world, like think of like the Northwest, like I could see this being a great fragrance. Maybe like you're in the UK, it's raining. I don't know, this one just works for me. If you're by the water, you might enjoy this one, but uh, I thought it was just a nice fragrance for me and uh, kind of matched like kind of the vibe that I wanted to go for. Looking at my other collection, I got the Awake, which is like that morning riser type of feel. And then you got the you know Montal, which is kind of very versatile, classy fragrance that you could pretty much wear in any circumstance, I think. Then you have something like this that's kind of this more moody type of feel uh, with what moody. it's going for. It is moody. It is a little moody. Yeah. And, and it's Like how you feel when you wake up on a gloomy day. It's a perfect fragrance for that. Kind of like kind today. Kind of like today. Kind of like today. This one works. Half the year in Cleveland, but. That's <laughs> <laughs> sweet. Yeah, that's my pick for my wild card. Okay. All right, so now we have our final wild card here. Go ahead, Courtney. Okay, my wild card is Atelier des Ors Crepuscule des Maze. 
I purchased this one this summer. I think I accidentally bought the wrong one, if I'm being totally honest with you. I <laughs> smelled one, and then I think I bought the wrong box, but when I got this home, it was totally okay because I adore this fragrance. I love the way it smells, which is shocking for me because this has a strong incense smell, which typically I really do not like. But something about this one just rounds it all out. Maybe it's the mandarin orange in there. Yeah, it, I think it, it's got a little bit of an animalic type of smell to yes. it as, as well. Woody, uh, kind of woody. Yeah, and it, it's 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 dense. Like this thing it will is. hit you hard. It yeah. has great performance from my experience with it. One spritz and the, the whole building smelling you. Yeah, and it's the bottle, incredible. Oh, Maybe some of my favorite beautiful. bottles. I don't really care about presentation. That's not really my oh, thing, my but it's very cool. It's when you do spray these, it- like, you, gold flakes in it. It's beautiful. Which can be annoying. Be careful when you spray these on clothes, any of their fragrances, because yeah. it does shoot out some gold with it, some little gold speckles. Just be careful of that. I mean, that might be the most pretentious thing I've ever seen, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's cool. It's beautiful. It's really oh. beautiful. You just kind of shake it around. It's very And nice. I really like this this um, brand. I do too. I've tried, um, um, what would it be? It would be Riviera oh. Lazuli yep. um, and then uh, Riviera, Riviera Drive. Drive. Like Both of those are nice. Yep. And then they have one from the Black Collection. It's Lune Feline, I believe it's called. It's a very like gourmand, sweet, beautiful fragrance. Um, but this one, I think, it is a little, the animalic kind of woody scent gives it a little bit more fall winter vibes, but I do think this is one that you could get away with wearing throughout the year. I think you could. You just have to be careful with sprays because this one, yes. performance is good. Strong. Yeah, it's, it's strong. Yeah. Very strong. Yep. So just kind of know what you're getting into here, but definitely a niche house to take a closer look at. Mm -hmm. I think people just see the bottles and just get into it, but they have some good sense. Too. Yeah, yep. So we didn't really have a specific men's or women's approach to this video, but I would say that this type of collection could work for both a man or yeah. a woman. Like No question about it. For sure. Me. I mean, all my picks are unisex. I'd say the same for mine. Mine might lean a little bit more masculine, but yeah. I mean, Acro, 100%, I would say unisex. Red Vetiver, I think, leans masculine, but I think you could still There wear are it. definitely ladies out there that could get away with wearing that. Yeah. And honestly, I like to wear men's fragrances. Mm -hmm. I think the kind they, they come across a little bit more masculine and sexy in a way sometimes, um, which I think can be really nice when you compare it to the more traditional, like feminine fragrances that are very girly, um, which isn't always the vibe, you know? So it's nice to throw in some more masculine fragrances in there too. Yeah, I think most niche houses are rather thoughtful with like the notes. They're, yes. they're more complex in what they're going for, so they're I think they have to be more thoughtful in how they're approaching it. They work a lot better for the unisex. I think so too. Option. So they, yeah. they ha kind of have to have that mentality if they're going to be able yeah. to sell this type and of And it makes it good. easier to justify buying something more expensive when you know that you can share it. Like we've definitely gone in have these on fragrances before, like because yes. we can both wear them and enjoy them together. So exactly. But alright, guys, that's all for this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. We're having a lot of fun doing this, and yeah. love to see you in future videos in the comments. And uh, also, what other videos and kind of coverage of brands you want us to see? Do you like styles of videos like this? What should we do next time? We're open to anything and different suggestions. We have a lot of things planned, but always want to hear what you guys have to say. Yep. But thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you all next time.